Martin's input for this, and then I took it and I made it my own and uh, cash in some other terms as well and expand a little bit. I have the letters right here if anyone wants to sign it. Uh, uh, okay, that's great. And so one of the many things that you can get from there, uh, thank you, Sally, and do this, but that you can sign it and we can uh, get them off to the governor. This one was an open letter. I published it in the break to Times. I, and what it was is it was uh, saying, hey, we have a problem with the way the appointments are made to fill vacancies in local elected offices. Because it's not the same thing as a uh, voice of we the people, far and away, uh, in short. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but why does that matter? Because our current supervisor of elections is going to retire effective the 1st of March, uh, which is days uh, from now. And because of his retirement at the age of 80, he's decided that uh, for once, because he spent his life doing this, he's a former state representative, and he's been our supervisor elections for uh, almost how many years? 11 years, a little over a decade. Uh, and uh, so his executive officer that's going to speak to us next, Scott Barrington, is the guy that he came forward and says, hey, Governor, I would like you to have my my executive officer uh, be the person to fill and, and receive your appointment. He's not without competition. And if you know that uh, uh, Commissioner James Satcher, District 1, has, has applied as well uh, for the governor's appointment on this, so we should know probably next week uh, or very very soon after that, because it's got to happen, because uh, we've got a presidential primary in uh, th in about three and a half weeks. Presidential primary. That's a lot of work to do, and that's the reason why. And you can't, uh, you, you, you got to hit the ground running on that. In fact, most of the work preparing for that has been done already in the last year. Uh, but by way of introduction for Scott Perrington, before I turn the mic over to him, I'll be brief and he can tell you more. Uh, he is executive officer for the, the, the supervisor election. I, and uh, he's been doing that, I think, for about a decade, right? And he came up from Sarasota. He's doing a similar role uh, in Sarasota. And so he's seen both things. There's some things that are similar, some things that are different down there, and they like that. But here's the point to be made. I cannot imagine if I was to go out and check every single citizen in Manatee County, a single citizen out there is more eminently qualified, particularly given the timing of when this appointment is required than Scott Farrington to do that. And, amen, I believe that to be true. And and, uh, and so we're making up, that wasn't a part of my open letter to the Governor DeSantis, but it's a part of other communications that, we're, that we are making to the Governor on that. Uh, but Scott Farrington, and he spoke to Manatee Patriots here a couple weeks ago, he made it abundantly clear that he's devoted his entire adult life to the job that he is seeking appointment to and election to uh, at the end of the year. That is where his commitment has been. There are not that many elected officials at any level that you can say this person's number one priority is just do the job that they're doing now to the best of their ability and service to the citizens. That's a rare thing. It shouldn't be, uh, but it is. It's rare. They're not saying, well, I'm going to do this, and then that's going to set me up to do X, Y, and Z in the future. Ultimately, do that. All right. In my opinion, having followed Scott both in Sarasota and up here, and certainly very closely in the five years uh, that, that I've been here, is that uh, uh, he walks the talk and he talks the walk. He does both and does that. So without that, Scott, I'm going to let you do it because you can do a better pick for yourself than I can. Scott Franklin, a candidate uh, for the governor's appointment to supervise elections as well as to be elected by we the people uh, after November. Scott? I don't really feel like I need to say much more. Are there any questions? <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. That's very kind. Um, I, I, you know who I am now. Uh, I won't go into that, but you probably don't know a lot of my history. And and um, so I, I will tell you a little bit. I'll take a few minutes and tell you that. So I was born in Indiana. Uh, my father is a truck driver, or was. He's retired now. My mother was a nurse. Um, when we were in Indiana, my they, they struggled for money. And my dad basically said, we can be poor, but I don't have to be cold and poor. So we moved to Florida. I was about eight years old and have been in this area ever since. Uh, I went to, my parents live off of DeSoto, DeSoto Road, right at the border of uh, Sarasota and Manatee. So for schools, I went to all Christian private schools. My parents thought that that was very important. So that's, that's what they did for me. Um, so I graduated from Community Christian High School, which I'm guessing most of you have never heard of. It still exists it's in Onico, Florida. Uh, it's tucked back in there, the very small, again, Christian private school. 
And then, um, sure. Okay, sorry. Uh, after that, I went to college, uh, went off to Florida Tech for two years, ran out of money, and came back home. Uh, did not have a degree, and I needed a job. So from there, I actually went to Kelly Temp Agency, and Kelly placed me in the Sarasota uh, County Elections Office. That was how I got started in elections. I get that question a lot. Very few people grow up thinking I'm going to go to elections, and I didn't either. It was it was a more of an accident than an on purpose. So, started in uh, Sarasota County in 2000 as a temp. Worked through 2000, was hired full time in 2001. Had almost every job in Sarasota County that is imagined. Uh, went through in 2007, became the assistant supervisor of chief of staff in Sarasota. Worked there for another three or four years, and. Um, Ended up leaving Sarasota for a couple of years, went to a software development company called Vertex, which again, I'm sure most of you have never heard of. It's a corporate tax software. Um, they bought Arthur Anderson software, if you're familiar with that. So worked there for a couple of years, and then I got a call from a, a Mike Bennett. And Mike Bennett was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to run for a supervisor. I am interested in it, and I need some help. So I did. I knew who he was. I did not know him. So I went and had lunch with him a couple of times and decided I didn't think I wanted to work for another politician. Um, and kind of told him so. And, and so he, you know, my wife and I had some conversations. I had more conversations with Mike Bennett and, and um, decided, you know what, this is, this is, I really do enjoy elections. I, I, it, I'm ready to get back into it. So I went and worked with Mike Bennett, started in 2013 in the Manitoba County Elections Office and have been there ever since and started there as the chief of staff. So started in 2000. Uh, as you can imagine, things have changed a lot since 2000. When I started in Sarasota, they still had punch cards. And then when I was in Sarasota, we moved to touch screens. And then when I was in Sarasota, we moved from touch screens to, uh, to um, Markson's ballot or paper ballot. And of course, in, in Manatee County, we still have that same different machines, but same style system. Um, so that's a little bit of my history. Um, I went through this entire process. When I was in Sarasota, I put myself through school at USF. Um, never took a debt out there. I, I did have some debt from when I went to Florida Tech. Like I said, I ran out of money, but I had some debt there. That's why I had to go to Kelly Temp Agency. But put myself through college, paid off that debt. And honestly, I never had the idea. I wasn't working towards being the supervisor of elections. Not until fairly recently when um, Mark or Mike, Mike was basically saying, you know what, I'm not done yet, but I am ready to start thinking about that. Did I think, well, maybe I could do this. But the truth is, I've never considered myself a politician. I've never wanted to be a politician. I've actually spent most of my career in elections trying not to be a politician, to keep politics out of it. It's a very weird position. It's a very weird job in that um, the supervisor of elections office is a constitutional office, and it is partisan. You do run by party. But you have to run the office completely nonpartisan. So it, 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 it's kind of a conundrum. It's kind of an oxymoron, right? You, you have to run as a, as a party. And, and I didn't say this, but when I registered to vote and for the first time in 1996, I registered as a Republican, and I've been registered as a Republican ever since. So it's one of those things that I almost keep as a secret. And it's not a secret, but it's not part of the job. It shouldn't be part of the job. It can't be part of the job. Um, so it, it's kind of a little bit on the weird side for me to even to say, I'm a Republican, but I am, I always have been, and I've always had those values. It's just, you can't run the office that way. The office has to be completely transparent and equal, no matter what party you belong to. And I know sometimes that seems, seems you know, like that shouldn't be the way it is, but it is the way it is. So um, taking that into account, you know, I have always kept, politics out of it. And to this day, I'm not going to tell you my opinions on any candidate, any position. It's just not what I think this office should should be. I don't think that someone who is in the office should be doing that. Honestly, that was one of the uh, hesitations I had with working with Mike Bennett. He has been such a, a politician his whole life. I wasn't sure he could keep it out. And, and honestly, I've been surprised at how well he has kept it out. It still, it still shines through every once in a while, but it, it, he does keep it out. Um, so keeping that in mind, I, like I said, I don't, I don't talk about candidates, I don't talk about positions, I don't talk about issues, um, unless it has to do with the office. And I know one of the issues that is um, 
I'm guessing of interest here is vote by mail. Vote by mail seems to be the hot topic recently, and and it's it, it's um it has gone up and down over the years as far as uh, acceptance. Uh, when it started in 2002 is when it really became a big issue, or it became what it's called a uh, no excuse absentee, where anybody in the state of Florida could get a vote by mail ballot, whether they had an excuse or not. It gradually grew to the point where now more people vote by mail than vote at the polls. And it's been that way for quite a while. And within the last four years, it has become an issue that is has become partisan. It really has. Um, and the Florida State Republican Party has gone back and forth on it. They were very opposed to it. They were very pro, and now I'm not sure where they stand, honestly. And I'm, 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 a lot of the local clubs have very um, differing opinions on it, and I'm not really sure what your your opinion is of it right here. And my guess is if you were to ask the room, you'd have a very different opinion on that. I say all that to say that one of the things that this office does, because we don't really take stands or issues on it on anything, um, it's really a managerial role in a lot of ways. We don't have a lot of access to change the law. We can, of course, you know, make, a, you know, the, give advice, give our opinions, but honestly, the legislature has not listened to us very much recently anyway. So, what, sorry, the way we tend to try and look at it is we're a managerial office. We have to do what the law says. The law right now is what it is, and vote by mail is still um, part of the law. So that we do it in a manner that we can feel like we're doing it as safe and securely as possible. I know some people probably have a different opinion on that, but that is the way we try and do it. Uh, so I, I say all that basically to say, I know vote by mail is kind of the, the hot topic. Um, I'm not gonna say whether I think it should be or not. I'm gonna say we do it in the safest way that we possibly can. Um, and, and honestly, the law recently has, as you know, it has removed a lot, it removed all of the vote by mail ballot requests and everybody had to re-request. In Manatee County, we had about 100,000 vote by mail requests on file. Right now, we're up to about 40,000. So it's, it has gotten back, not nearly to where it was, but it is gradually increasing. And I imagine by the August primary, it'll be back to about 70,000. So about 70% of where it was. So. I'm curious, actually, how many, I mean, is there, does the um, the Republican you know, caucus have an, a, a position on vote by mail? We, we've not taken an official position, but if you polled our membership, I, I think our membership would be pretty much in, in complete agreement that there's way too much of it. If we had our brothers, we would, we would say, okay, you're going to be out of town and you can prove it. If you're in the military and you're stationed abroad or wherever, you know, if you're an invalid, if you can't get out, you know, and that can be very, then, then yeah, there ought to be provisions for people. But this whole sale, just mail them out all over the place, I mean, it's just, it's a disaster. I mean, people are, people are, yeah, I mean, I was at, this is not, this is the last election cycle, no, two cycles ago. <clears throat> when 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 Trump and uh, and uh, Biden were running against each other, I was at a friend's house down in Boca Raton, a supporter of ours, and he called me into his, his home study and he said, what, "What what should I do with this?" He had an absentee ballot from his local supervisor elections office, and he had an absentee ballot from Chicago, where he had just moved from within the last like two years. So he was still on the voter rolls and had an automatic renewal, mm -hmm. okay, as opposed to having to renew every single time. Uh, he could have easily voted twice. I mean, that's happening all over the country. People are voting multiple times because they're getting multiple options. Okay. Well, let me say one thing and then I'll take your question. And, and, and basically, is I, I get that a lot. I hear that a lot. Um, what I'm going to say is, from from what I hear from the state, vote by mail is here to stay. They have made the changes that they're intending to make, and I don't I don't hear that they're making any more. At least not this year. Um, and so that means that you're going to have to work with it, and we have to work with it. So we again we try and do it in a manner that is as safe and secure as possible. The law has changed so that you must make a request with us before every election cycle to get a vote by mail. You must include more um, identifying information for us to give you a vote by mail. So. It, they have changed it to make it a little more secure that way. But I'm gonna tell you, the popularity is there. 
And, and because of that, I think it's going to be very hard to get the legislation to change. That, that's my guess. But um, either way, you, you had a question? Uh, yeah, I appreciate it, Scott. Just a, a quick one before I get to my point. Did you work with uh, Kathy Dent in Sarasota at all? Yes, yes. I worked from Kathy 2001 Fowler. to 2010 with Kathy Dent. Yeah. Kathy Fowler, how long is it? Kathy Fowler has retired, yes. Uh, my, my observation is that one of the areas that supervisors of elections have some uh, uh, leeway, some uh, discretion, excuse me, is the maintenance of voter rolls. Now, state law, and I don't know, it's, it's 97 dot blah, 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 whatever it is. Uh, excuse me. But it specifies that supervisors of elections shall use one of three measures to update their voter roll. And uh, one of them is to wait for a non deliverable parcel from the USPS, the Postal Service, that says this person is, is not receiving mail at this point, and they're supposed to forward it to the supervisor of elections so that they can send them a postcard to verify that they're still at that address. Uh, another, uh, as I understand it anyway, uh, you also have the ability, and I can't remember the third one, but I, the, uh, there is one that I believe. If a person, I know it used to be this way in Sarasota, if the person hasn't voted in the last two presidential elections, then they send a confirmation card to their address, and I don't know if that's still applicable. How, how do you plan on maintaining voters? Um, so, you're, you're actually very well informed. Not too many people understand the process that well, but it has recently changed. And by recently, I mean this is the first year that it would apply. And, and so, they took some of those options away and made some of them mandatory. So the way it works is we do what's called, I mean, every year we must do a list maintenance. And the most common method to do that list maintenance in every county in Florida does it, is, which, is using the US Postal System NCOA, Notice of Change of Address. And the reason we do that is, um, talking to you about uh, the situation that you were referring to earlier, someone moves from Chicago or Ohio or anywhere to Florida, they're not always very good about telling the state that they just left. I, the, I'm, I'm not there anymore, don't let me vote. But they are really good about making sure their mail follows. So we use that, and that, that is the primary way, honestly, that we get most of, do most of the um, list meetings. The second thing that you mentioned, and, and it is now mandatory for every county to do it, and that is if someone has not and we do this in an uh, off year, so we did it this year. We won't do it next, or excuse me, we did it in 2023, we won't do it in 2024, and I'll tell you why in a second. If you have not voted in, the la in one of the last two general elections, so 2020 or 2022, we send you what's called a final notice. Doesn't really matter what it's called, but we send you a piece of mail that basically says if we do not hear back from you within 30 days, we are gonna make you inactive. We hear back from them, they stay on the rolls. If we don't hear back from them, they become inactive. Um, and, it, and, and this is where a lot of confusion comes in. Inactive does not mean that they can't vote. They are still a registered voter. They are just an inactive registered voter. And this again is by state law. This is not something that we have the ability to change or to, to we have no leeway on this. Um, they stay an inactive voter for two more general elections. And if they do not communicate with our office, they don't sign a petition, they don't vote, they don't otherwise tell us they move their address or, or confirm their address, then we remove them from the rolls. So it, it, is, it is a process that we do, and now every every uh, county in Florida does, is that, that mailing. Matter of fact, you may have heard that Florida dropped about 2 million voters this year. That's the primary reason, because every county in Florida did that activity, and about 2 million people became in Thank you. Yes. At what risk? Are we facing if a person who has no idea how to do your job gets elected? I'm not asking you to be personal. I'm just saying it doesn't sound to me like I can just decide I want to be the supervisor of elections and I can get elected and I can just walk in there and, and do it. I like to think that it. So it, it depends, right? So Mike Bennett came into the office and he knew nothing about elections. Where Mike had an advantage over somebody else is Mike got me. And I don't mean that to sound arrogant, but it is a little bit on the air. Side. Um, but in, in a lot of elections offices, the supervisor of elections isn't the one that knows all the stuff, it's the staff. The difference between here and any other, or a lot of other elections offices, um, 
we have a very tight budget. We keep a very intentionally tight budget, which means we keep it, our staff is level is lower than some of the others. Um, we have a lot of staff that are retirement level. They, we have one that's been there for 33 years. We have another one that's been there for 32 years. Uh, myself, I, I've been there for 11 years, but I'm not gonna say they're gonna retire, but I am gonna say I will not work for them. So what is the risk? The risk is that stuff gets missed. Stuff doesn't, doesn't happen that should have happened. Um, I don't want to sound doom and gloom, but I, I would be worried about the office. Yeah. Yeah. Could I offer something else? Sure. Is there a sort of, <laughs> we've got one of the most, uh, I think, yeah. No, we got two more speakers, so be quick. If you got a question, get to it. Yeah. Oh. We got one of the most uh, conscientious and innovative uh, supervisors, Ron Turner. Just wondering if you've given any thoughts of working with him on any of the things he's implementing, sir. Ron, I've known Ron. Ron actually took my job when I left Sarasota, and then he, he went on and became the supervisor. Uh, I've known Ron for quite a long time. We talk fairly frequently. He, he, um, he's, very, he's very well known among the election supervisors. Uh, yes, yes, we, we frequently share ideas. Cool, thank you. Kenny? Yes. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, due to the atmosphere and the Edwards in Washington, D.C. right now, do have we found a lot of our citizens in Manatee County changing sides, going coming into the office and saying, I want to be this party and not that party? There has been, I can't tell you why they do it, obviously, but I can tell you that the, the Republican Party has been on the rise. The Demo Having said that, so is the no party affiliation. Right now in Manatee County, there are more no party affiliation voters than there are Democratic voters. It's the first time, happened late last year, that it's, it shifted. It's the first time it's ever happened. There are other counties like that, but not many. It's it's not like that statewide. My point is, the um, you see the Republican Party rising a little bit. You see the Democratic Party dropping a little bit. And you see the MPAs taking up the difference. That's that's where most of the growth has been, is in MPA. So um, you do always get a little bit of, of shift back and forth, but the truth is we don't really know why they shift. And, and so. Um, kind of along in that same vein, but more specifically to the our local level. Um, as you know, there's going to be a Republican only primary, no Democratic primary, or the preference primary. Have you seen many people switching either from Democrats to Republicans or no, party to Republicans simply for that reason? Since yesterday was they were supposed to do it, do you have any new numbers that show that? Or was it 5,000, 2,000, a couple hundred? Not a lot. Honestly, the, the truth is there has not been a lot of interest in this election. Um, for some obvious, I mean, one, you, you cut half the county off, it's just the Republicans. Granted, that's 125,000 people in Manatee County. Um, but I, the, the sense I get is a lot of them feel that it's over already, and so there's just not this huge push. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you.